Hello and welcome back to Elliot Designs. Today I'll be showing you how to use REW to generate an EQ for rephase for room correction. Okay, so we're in REW version 5.20.6, that's the newest as of recording. I recommend you upgrade to the newest version as there's been a couple of really useful bug fixes, specifically if you have a UMIC microphone, there was an issue with DB uh, recordings, as you can tell having happened here with my prepared measurement through an RTA, moving mic measurement. As you can see, we are starting off with a prepared measurement, so if you want to see how to do that, I will link a couple of videos in the description that I used when I was starting out. So now we've got this prepared measurement, we're going to jump straight in with our EQ. We're going to click this button up here in the top right, maximize this window. First thing we're going to want to do is see this blue highlighted icon up here, it's for the graph limits. We're going to hit fit to data and that is going to ensure that our entire graph is displayed on the screen. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click the gear icon and we're going to move it over to psychoacoustic smoothing. All that does is it displays this spectrum um, in a way that we would actually hear it. So if I click on this, all of these deeps and peaks we're going to see um, on this graph is actually representative of changes in volume and frequency that we can hear. So first things first is to go to the top up here, make sure that your equalizer is set to rephase, your target type is set to none, unless you do have a bass limited speaker for your subwoofer or bookshelf speaker, in which case you do want to set these to the appropriate values. In this case, this subwoofer doesn't have that, but uh, most subwoofers, especially ones that aren't DIY, do have a uh, low frequency cutoff, i.e. a high pass filter set at 20 hertz at 24 decibels per octave. But here I'm going to set it to none. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to bring our target level down to the correct height. So here, as I mentioned, this was taken when the gain wasn't set correctly because of the bug in REW, which is six now. So the level is quite low, but the center of the level, which is about here, I'm going to make sure it's about in the center. There we go. We want it about there. The next thing we're going to see is that the high frequencies start dropping off at about 1.5 kilohertz. Typically, what you'll see is high frequencies dropping off at different rates dependent on both your tweeter and your room acoustics. So that could be anywhere around your speaker or your room itself that can both uh, change how your high frequency slope drops off. So here we can see that it's dropping off at about the same rate all the way from 1.5 kilohertz all the way up to 20 kilohertz. So we're going to set a high frequency full start at 1500. 1500 hertz and we're going to keep increasing our high frequency full slope until we get to that point. So because we have it set at 1.5 kilohertz we're going to bring our level down until it matches that so we have something to compare to. Keep going down, there we go, and then we increase our high frequency full slope until it's about in the centre. So. It's a little bit of trial and error here, but we have it about right at about about 4.2 seems about right. Let's bring it back up, see how that looks. Maybe a bit higher. There we go, 4.4, 4.5. I'm going to stick to 4.5. There we go, that looks a lot neater. Now, with the low frequency rise start and low frequency rise end, I'm going to base those off of Harman's research with how uh, room gain usually happens in most rooms, which is a low frequency rise starting at 180 hertz and an end at 60 hertz. Your low frequency rise slope in decibels per octave is entirely preferential. Uh, some people like more bass, some people like less. You can go all the way from 0 dB per octave increase all the way up to 6. Um, just for this example, I'm just going to pick a number in between, so let's pick four for this instance. Okay, and then the next step is we are going to change it back to no smoothing because we want to ensure that the target level, this purple line here, it's not always purple by the way, 
is below everywhere we want to be correcting. So in this situation, we want to be correcting from 30 hertz, because I don't want to lose too much gain, um, up to 20 kilohertz. So we're going to move this down now until we're at 30 hertz here. So about 28. There we go. Most of the blue line is now above the purple line. And the reason we want that to be happening is because REW doesn't really like to make many boosts. So even though we have an individual max boost and overall max boost maxed out here, it still doesn't like to do uh, peaks. It makes more substantial corrections when it's making cuts in the gain. We can always adjust the gain afterwards in rephase when we get to that stage. So here we're setting our match range from 30 hertz to 20,000 hertz, since that's where we're correcting from. What I typically like to do depends on what works at that current time. So I either match the response to target with no smoothing applied like this. We'll get a warning like this because most of our response is above. That's because we're cutting and we want it to make more changes. There we go. Smoothing it out nicely. Perfect. And I should mention as well, uh, the lower flatness target, the, uh, the smoother it tries to make the response. So, of course, we're going to go for our lowest value here of 1 dB, uh, which it tries to aim for as plus or minus 1 dB. That's what it tries to get our response in line with the purple target. So now we're going to move our smoothing back to psychoacoustic, see how that looks. We can clean this up a bit by removing our target and our filters. Uh, this is the predicted response in light blue, much smoother. And our prepared measurement uh, that we had taken earlier in dark blue. Much smoother, much more what we want it to look like. Gives a much more natural response there. Uh, we're going to bring our target back and our filters and target. There we go. We can actually move the target for that. There we go. Essentially, what the filters does is it shows you what EQ the REW has picked. Now, for measurements such as vector averaged um, or just plain old um, sweep measurements, you are going to want to use a level of smoothing so that sharp peaks from room modes don't actually come into account when it's trying to compensate for them. It just compensates for wider dips and tries to compensate for that room mode by not putting more gain into it, because that would just make the room mode worse, but instead increasing the frequencies around it to try and compensate for that loss from that room mode. Of course, the best way to deal with room modes is to fix your room, but that's not always the most feasible, so this is the next best solution. But if you're using a moving microphone measurement, like I am, uh, you're not going to see any of those room modes because they are smoothed out from doing such a wide range of uh, measurement sweeps that are then averaged. So now that we have our measurement, we can go over to the bottom right, making sure that all of these settings are correct, just as a last check. Rephase, target settings are correct to what we want and our match range and everything, yep. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that uh, allow uh, narrow filters below 200 hertz and very max Q above 200 hertz allow for more detailed EQ generation below 200 hertz. And as long as you're as long as you're staying away from correcting those room modes, these are perfectly good to have enabled and enable you to have a more accurately corrected response in the base and sub base regions. So we're going to save our filter settings to file so that we can then later use them in rephase. Uh, these settings really don't matter. They don't come up anywhere. And then I'm just going to name my EQ file a given name that I'll recognize when going back into the rephase program. So here I'm just going to name it tutorial. And because I do lots of these room EQs for testing purposes, I'm just going to give it a date for representation so I know when I had made it. Okay, so we're going to save that and that is done. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and please subscribe. If you like the videos I've been making, I'm going to be making a lot more, I hope. So stay tuned.